You it is get your it's your boy time back here with another video and in this video today guys we're gonna be going over the top 10 budget cards in NBA 2k23 my team another way you guys can look at this if you want to is value cards or if you guys are trying to build like a squad with a hundred thousand MT this video can help you guys out as well so for example my nobody spent squad now Keep in the back of your mind, in my No Money Spent squad, I got how many free cards? One, two, he's in ascension, three, four, five, six, seven, as it is right now. And that doesn't include Draymond, Sean Marion, Bradley Beal, Michael Red, all of those really solid cards as well. So obviously, you know, some of these cards are, you know, are very good, but they're just free. Another thing, I try to keep these cards below 10,000 MT because honestly, you can get a lot for 10,000 MT and maybe even more for 20,000 MT. But these are gonna be your best budget cards in my team. Starting off at number 10, Diamond George Gervin. Now, again, you keep in mind that 10,000 MT. You can get George Gervin for what? You know, nine, eight, 7,000 MT. I mean, the card really is cheap. Might be able to get one with a couple of extra badges, maybe even a diamond shoe for 9,000 MT. Here's what you're looking at with Mr. George Gervin. 8,000 MT, 6-7, decent three ball, decent driving dunk, ball handle is solid. Defensively can hold it down. The, 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 the big thing for George Gervin is attacking the rim, he's great. He can standing dunk and defensively he's solid. And his release is smooth too. So, I mean, at, at, when you're looking at it from a full picture, he can do basically everything you need him to do on the basketball court. Definitely way better at the shooting guard position than the small four position. If you are looking for kind of just that all around shooting guard in, in my team, the Iceman George Gervin can definitely get the job done. Coming in at number nine, we're plugging in the Marksman Diamond Laurie Marketing. Now, the reason he wasn't on the top 100 list is just basically because the Pink Diamond Laurie is in the game. Diamond Laurie, just basically the same type of card. 10,000 MT, you can get yourself Laurie. This one's 11,000 MT, has an extra Hall of Fame badge as well. I think it's special delivery, which isn't great. But he also does have a diamond shoe. So again, look for these to be fully badged out if you can. 9,000 MT for Laurie, seven feet tall, 94, three ball, 80 standing, driving, done decent point or decent defensively. The big thing here for Laurie is that he's seven feet tall and his release is not horrible, right? Is he the best player in the game? No, but he does have Hall of Fame catch and shoot, Hall of Fame limitless range. And again, he's seven feet tall. In a game that's kind of ran by height right now, especially with the addition of Yao Ming, Laurie can help out with that. Is he gonna ever get a paint stop on the big Galaxy Opal Yao? Probably not, but he can provide at least some resistance to a card like that. Coming in at number eight here, a point guard, in Markel Fultz. If you want to talk about budget point guards in my team, there's some that are like 20, 30,000 MT, but you want a good, cheap budget point guard, look no further than Markel Fultz. Absolutely no further than this card. I know KPJ is who a lot of people like. I like Markel Fultz even more. 2,000 MT, 6'4", decent three ball, great release, 85 driving, a good ball handle, defensively absolutely solid. To me, I think he's just way more complete than KPJ as he comes. Comes with unpluckable badge that KPJ doesn't come with. Solid defensively as well. I've just had a lot of success with him. The quick first step on, on, on Markel Fultz is definitely underrated. And if I pull the card up here on 2K Database, you can see the card comes with MJ Dribble Style too. There's just really no flaws in Markel Fultz in general. And if you are just starting the game and don't have Donovan Mitchell, don't have Drew Holiday, Markel Fultz is a very solid alternative to those two guys. At number seven, we're plugging in Diamond Franz Wagner. After the Evo, yes, Franz Wagner still making my budget list. You guys might call me crazy if you want, but I still love this card. Don't be surprised if he makes a return to the No Money Spent squad at some point. Problem is my small forwards are Thurl and Jonathan Isaac, who you guys will be uh, seeing later on. I do love Franz though. I think his release is outstanding. I think he plays great defense. And for 10,000 MT, what else do you want? His release, super chicken. And that's what I'm saying. For the average person that just picks up the game, that is looking for a budget small forward, you're going to be super impressed with Franz. Great release. Can dunk the ball. Plays great defense. I like his player build player model. I honestly want an Opal Franz box. That's how much I do like the card in general. Coming in at number six, headed back to that shooting guard position. 
We're plugging in Amethyst Cam Reddish. Now, I know I forgot him on my top 100 list. Don't remind me, guys. I know I forgot him, but I love this card. More than anything, 6'8". Right now in my team, height, again, kind of runs the game. So instead of running like that 6'4 shooting guard, you know, you get a 6'8 shooting guard again that can shoot the ball, can dunk the ball, great defensively. Just an overall solid card. Do I love Cam Reddish's release? No. I think it's solid. I think it's okay. Definitely room for improvement as far as his release is concerned, but he's 6'8". Plays great defense. Again, dunks the ball. Can handle the ball decently. I would not have a problem running Cam Reddish on my no money spent as I am right now. Will he get replaced? Probably soon, yes. But for now, he holds it down for me. At number five, okay, cracking our top five right here. This is the guy I was waiting on. Diamond Jonathan Isaac. And again, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are like Ty. There are way more complete small forwards than Jonathan Isaac right now. Okay. Are there more complete small forwards for 8,000 MT? Good luck. 6'11", 84, 3 ball, 85, driving, done great ball handle. Defensively, absolutely elite. And that's what really gets me excited. When I talk about players, and I got a guy that's a 3 and D guy that can do it all like Jonathan Isaac, what more do you need? I know his dribbling is not great. Just don't dribble with him. He's going to lock down. He's going to play lockdown defense. You want a guy that can kind of go up against maybe Yao and get you the occasional shot? Stop. Jonathan Isaac can do exactly that with some of the badges he has. I just love this card, man. This card, I wish had more total badges, but uh, you got to realize he doesn't have basically any playmaking badges. Defensively, shooting-wise, the card's perfect. Coming in at number five. Coming in at number four, one of the newest cards in the newest releases is Wesley Person. Now, I would be lying to sit here and tell you guys that I've used this card because still to this day, I've not used him and I'm running Cam Reddish over him. But next time I go into my team and limited on the no money spent, I'll try out Mr. Wesley because I've seen some highlights and the card's honestly pretty good. Good three ball, good driving, dunk, good everything. Defensively is solid enough. Hall of Fame, Limitless Range and Agent 3s too. That's the big thing for me. He's got Hall of Fame Limitless Range as an Amethyst with MJ Dribble Style Mikhail Bridges base on quick. I mean, the card's got a lot going for him. Do I think he's perfect? No. Do I think he's just that next little bit better than a guy like Amethyst Cam Reddish as far as nobody spent players are concerned? Absolutely. That's why Wesley is a little bit higher coming in at number four. Now to our top three, Diamond Thorough Bailey. Yes, still making the list for me. Him or Jonathan Isaac, I think it really is preference. I do think Thorough gives you a little more offense, as was that better masher. Jonathan Isaac is going to be that little better defensively. But again, you can find a throw that does have those few extra badges. Definitely something I, I try to do. 9,000 MT, 611. The three ball being an 80 is one of the biggest lies my team has ever told. His three ball feels like probably upper 80s. Good standing driving dunk again. Really solid defensively. The reason I like throw more than anything, Hall of Fame clamp breaker, quick first step. He can get you that occasional bucket offensively. Plus, I feel like his player model is underrated. And that's something that you can't take for granted. Especially at that power forward position, I still feel like throw Bailey holds it down as well as nearly anybody else. Coming in at number three for me. Coming in at number two and number one, both big men. Coming in at number two, we're plugging in Big Serge Ibaka. He would have been number one on my list a few days ago, but I got a number one in there who I just like too much. Just over that 10,000 MT mark, I almost guarantee if you if, if you get the right time period, you will be able to snipe one for you know that 10,000 MT. Because right now, just over that 11,000 MT, 6'11", 88 three ball, 90 standing dunk, 95 driving dunk, really solid defensively. I still will hold true that I think the best position for him right now as it stands is that power forward position because at center, he might struggle to guard guys like Yao, but can stretch the floor for you, provides great defense, just an all around absolutely incredible player. Now for me, the problem is I really don't have room. I got Bam, I got Mel, I got Jaron Jackson Jr., I got Big Wang. On my no money spent squad series, I really don't have room for him. And that leads me to number one. Another guy I really don't have room for, but who I've absolutely, especially recently, fell in love with. And that is Diamond Evan Mobley. I think Evan Mobley is just a better version of Serge Ibaka, just because I feel like Mobley, as far as at the center position, has that little more height and can compete that little extra good. Here's the deal for Evan Mobley, okay? I just saw one with the diamond shoe. So that's the one we're going to look at. He's 8,000 MT. Talk about value. This one has a diamond shoe for 9,500. 
Uh, gets that 84 three ball, good standing driving dunk. Defensively, an absolute menace. And that's the big thing for me. His player model is great. His defensive stats are great. Don't even get me started on his defensive badges. They're absolutely incredible. Now, you could you could say this to me. Okay, Todd, but Mobley's release is horrible. What I would kind of come back with is it's not horrible in which it's hard to green, right? Because even, even when I, I talk about releases that are horrible and hard to green, Mel Daniels, right? When I'm comparing Evan Mobley to Mel Daniels, I give the release advantage to Evan Mobley. Even though it's on slow, it's easier to green, easier to time. And it's nearly just as fast. Mel Daniels has an absolutely horrible release. Combine that with the fact that Evan Mobley is a little bit taller. I'm not sitting up here saying he's better than Mel Daniels because I think it's close. But when it comes down to it, for 8,000 MT, find me a better power forward than Evan Mobley. I just don't think you'll be able to. So when it comes down to it, guys, the best budget cards of the game are these free cards. Bam, Mel Daniels, Jaron Jackson Jr., big way. But outside of there, I gave you guys my top 10. So many great budget options. You guys see a lot of them on the court for me. Cam Reddish, Thurl Bailey, Jonathan Isaac, those type of guys, even still to this day, make my no money spent squad series. Drop a like on the video, guys. Subscribe if you are new. And as always, man, I love you guys. And have a blessed day.